AMC theaters. We make movies better. Yeah, baby! Woo! Woo, 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 woo! Ow! Hello, Adam. Hi, Adam! Whoa, 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 welcome to Tampa! Yeah! I'm yeah. so sorry we started a few minutes late. I asked, I, some of you may know that I screened Avatar last night in Orlando. And I asked everybody at the hotel, so how long did it take you to Tampa? An hour, right? He said, well, if you speed an hour, maybe an hour and 15. No. Two and a half hours to get to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell me about the road work on I-4 or, or the accident on the 275 South. That is what it is. Anyway, I actually was here on time. It's just that we better say it. I'm sorry we started a few minutes late. Um, I am so honored and pleased to be with you tonight. This is the 13th time that I've hosted a screening in the last year. Um, 12 of them in the US, one in London. And I've committed to do another 12 next year. It's actually 12 of the most fun nights for me of the year. Because I get to not only be with you and watch a good movie, and by the way, Avatar is an amazing movie. It was so good last night, I only watched the first half. Because I didn't want to like, it's a three hour movie, I didn't want to see the whole thing and then see it tonight, the whole thing again. So I walked out at the halfway point, thinking, I shouldn't have walked out, I should have seen it twice in the two, two nights, right? <laughs> and then I was going back in at the end of the movie to say goodbye to everybody. And I made sure I, I only walked in at the end of the credits. So I don't know how it ends. <laughs> but I can tell you without spoiling a thing, it starts, Beautifully, visually, this movie is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I just don't know how a human being, me and James Cameron, can come up with a vision like what we're all going to see together tonight. And by the end of the night, all of us, including me, will know how the movie ends. So, um, <laughs> before I say anything more, I just like to make a couple of introductions if I can. Where's Janelle? You know, the senior manager at this theater, we're a senior manager. This is the general manager of the theater, has been for the last 12 years. Woo! And she told me as we were sitting down waiting, watching the trailers, um, that in June, or April, one of your June, will be her 40th anniversary with AMC. Wow. Wow. Exactly seven years ago. Literally, exactly. 
exactly seven years ago. I think it was the 18th of December of 2015. Right. And um, the company I joined was the second largest movie theater chain in the US. Within a year, it was the largest movie theater chain in the US, the largest movie theater chain in Europe, and the largest movie theater chain in the world. And by December of 2019, I don't want to say we were fast down and happy, because we weren't so fast, we weren't so dumb. We were pretty happy. But in the grand scheme of things, we were fast down and happy. We were the biggest movie theater company in the world, making lots of money. We'd like to think that we were the best product of any movie theater company around. We had the best marketing programs of anybody in the movie and theater industry. We'd like to think of AMC as being the best innovator in the movie theater industry. And everything was just fine. And then comes COVID. And in the span of one week, in March of 2020, we went from having five and a half billion dollars of revenue a year to none in a week. And some of you know my background. I was lucky enough to get an MBA at the Harvard Business School, and which is like, I think, like the best business school in the country. And they teach there by the case study. So there aren't any lectures. The professors never spell out. They just present a business situation. You read the case, it's like 30, 40 pages long. And then you discuss the case in the class. And in the span of two years, you do that a thousand times. And so it's like you're simulating all these business challenges that you would face in, in a lifetime, or 10 lifetimes, or 100 lifetimes. Sort of the way airline pilots learn to fly a simulator. Well, let me tell you what you didn't teach at the Harvard Business School. Not once. I never saw, saw something called the zero revenue case. <laughs> do you know how hard it is to take a company that was sized to do five hundred billion dollars in revenue and literally just take a week when it was nothing? And we almost ran out of cash five times in twenty twenty two. Sorry, in twenty twenty. Five times. But we kept on throwing everything we had at it, and we were pulling one rabbit out of a hat after another. And by the fifth time that we saved AMC, it was a Monday in January, 2021. Yep. 801. One, and I actually put out a press release before the market opened on Monday that said, uh, bankruptcy's off the table, we saved AMC, we raised $1.2 billion. We're all very happy. The next night, the apes arrived. And that was January of 2021. <laughs> Almost two years ago. Yeah. And the ride that we've had with you over the past two years is kind of mind blowing. Um, you're passionate about our company. Not just the 150 of you in this room tonight, but the millions of your brothers and sister apes. You're passionate about your company. And you want to make money, I get that. But so many of you want to do something else too. Uh, you were mad. You were mad that Wall Street was trying to take us out. And that they were trying to end what's been an important part of American life for a century. Going to movies in a theater is what Americans like to do. In 2019, before the pandemic, it was done a billion times. The movie theater industry in the US, of which we're about a quarter, sold a billion movie theater tickets in 2019. A billion, you know how big a billion is? <laughs> Take the entire attendance of every major league baseball team, all season long, all 81 home games, all whatever it is, 30 each teams, you know, 32, I mean, the entire attendance of major league baseball. Add to it the entire attendance all season long of every home game of every team in the NFL. Add to that every home game of every team in 
and the NBA and the NHL and Major League Soccer. Out of all those tickets, that movie theater sell seven times the tickets for all the professional sports. Americans like going to the movies. That's right. But Wall Street was trying to take us out. And you just said no. You like going to movies and theaters. And you didn't want to see it in. And you gave us the cash that we needed to survive the pandemic. And we're not, and you know, look, we still have a lot of left. We didn't blow through it all. <laughs> At the end of September, we still had $900 million uh, in the bank. $900 million. <laughs> Not in Tampa. Well, you were scared of the virus. Uh, but that's not where we are today. Where we are today is that American life is returning to normal. You know, we're gathering in big groups again. Nobody's wearing masks again. Nobody's really worried about getting COVID. And if you get it, there's something called Paxlovid. It's a pill you take for five years. The first 12 hours, it kind of knocks out the symptoms and probably keeps you out of the hospitals and almost certainly keeps you away from them. That's not where we were a few years ago. And so when you ask them, look, people are not afraid to come to theaters anymore. In November, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was the biggest opening ever for a movie that opened in the month of November. This movie that we're going to see together tonight, its opening was Thursday to Sunday. It's the biggest opening of a James Cameron movie in his entire career. 
And this is the guy who did that original Avatar, which is the biggest movie of all time. Titanic, also the biggest movies of all time. Uh, the Terminator, Terminator 2, True Lies, Aliens. This, he never had a movie ever that grossed over $100 million over the weekend. This one's going to gross $134 million over the weekend. So what if people are not afraid to come to the theaters? Our problem is Hollywood's just not releasing enough movies. And they give us lots of reasons why. The production delays during 2021 takes two years to make a movie. But if you look at the movies that are coming out, there are more of them coming in 23, there are more of them coming in 24. We're going to be just fine if we did last. And to that end, we put out a press release just this morning that said that in the last 90 days, like, while the latest rumor monitoring of Wall Street is trying to spread all this fear, uncertainty, and doubt about our company, we raised another $160 million in the last 90 days. Damn. Oh, that's Steve, Steve Jobs is talking to me. I'm going to turn. <laughs> I'm one. And, and I write all my tweets myself. Um, you guys do 
give me so much energy. How can I let you down? I just can't. Thank you. I see how much you've invested, not just money, but of yourself and your emotions and your heart. How much you've invested in this company having a second century as good as our first. And I owe it to you to deliver that for you. That's right. And so you're, you keep me going. And you build me with drive. Let's watch Avatar, The Way of Water. Thank you for having me.